Welcome to Live and Loud once again with your host Hassan Tabada. And this week I want to start with one of those, you know, Alcoholic Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous confessions and say, Hi, I'm Hassan Tabada and I'm addicted to Twitter. And um, very deliberately I've got this thing in my hand, but I'll explain to you my journey um, when I was young. Um, you know, we used to go to Madrasa, for those who don't know, that's Muslim school, after school. And I used to f not like going because it was always fire and brimstone, you know, like they would rattle off a list of the things that will lead you to heaven and a longer list for all those things that will send you straight to hell. And they always warned us about this character called Dajjal, you know, the one-eyed man who will pretend to be the Messiah and his arrival will coincide with the second coming of Jesus, who we in the Muslim faith revere as Nabi Isa. And um, we were always told, Mutita feel TV kaki. If you watch TV too much, Dajjal's going to um, enchant you, you know, and, and you're going to fall under his spell. And so I watched Brakanyan, Ye Man, and Pinocchio with a simulcast in Radio 2000 in English, and nothing happened. And then smartphones came along, and a lot of us have the tail wagging the dog. Instead of us using this as a tool or a device to make our lives easier, we ruled by these things. And I've, I, I, felt guil I felt guilty uh, of, of that as well. And so I thought, you know, it's got one screen, so this must be Dajjal, you know, because it's, it's luring me to not be in the moment and not pay attention. But this Dajjal Nukha comes with extra lenses and you can swipe up and down and scroll. He's very interactive, this guy. And then I thought to myself, it's not Dajjal, it's me. It's my own behavior, you know, and it's all of our behavior. How many times have you sat in a restaurant and you families are all sitting down, but everybody is on their phone. So I started to change my behavior. My kids started drawing pictures of me with um, the whole family, and I'm the guy with the phone in his hand. And I thought something's wrong here. So now I'm very proud to say that I'm starting to change my behavior when I drive. I'm not WhatsApping or tweeting while I'm driving. The phone is put in the cubbyhole or on the side of my door. Um, when family members can attest to this, when I have conversations with them, I'm not scrolling up and down Twitter. I'm actually in the moment and listening to them. I mean, there was a point where it was Ramadan and I used to break my fast with my phone next to my bowl of soup and I'd be checking Twitter. And there was something wrong with this. So I deliberately nowadays put the phone away and find two hours of time to cook or an hour and a half of my workout routine where if you're trying to get hold of, of me, tough luck. Send a carrier pigeon. Um, if it's an emergency, you'll know how to get hold of me, but I'm not going to let my phone rule my life or ruin my life. It's a tool, it's a device that's made our lives easier and that's how it should be. Don't let the tail wag the dog. <laughs> Serious face. Now for your news. And this week we're going to talk about the price of eggs. Um, earlier this week, the price of petrol went up and diesel and other related products went up yet again and already into a consumer market that is under pressure. Um, what does this have to do with the price of eggs, you may ask? Everything because the entire chain is going to be affected by this petrol price increase. The taxis just came back after making peace, and they're probably going to pass on that increase to the commuters who can afford it the least. Now, I remember when I was growing up, my mom used to say to us, if you didn't finish your veggies, what about those kids in Ethiopia who don't have veggies? Well, the kids in Ethiopia are currently saying, what about the South African kids who don't have? So, um, yeah, everything to do with the price of eggs. And 
I think the worst component of these price increases while salaries have either stayed static or been slashed or people have lost their livelihoods is the fact that we are still propping up these state-owned enterprises like SAA, we're just dumping billions into a thing that why does government need to have an airline? But let me focus a bit on ESCOM because earlier this year they recommended um, tariff increases of between 13 to 15 percent, which is about three times, if, if not more, uh, the price of inflation. And how are ordinary households supposed to cope with this? So they're saying to us, invest in solar, invest in whatever alternative energy, but how can you do that when you don't even have the capital for that kind of outlay? My question is this, if we've got sunny South Africa, where the sun shines for most parts of the year, why don't we tap into solar energy as an alternative? instead of building nuclear or coal-powered plants where they don't even have the aftakis when it rains and then we have load shedding. The only plausible reason I can think of is that somebody is on the take. It's evil, it's immoral, stop doing it. It's affecting the people you're supposed to serve. Hassan Tabada, live and loud, Cape Town. So this is a part of the show that I said last week would become a regular feature and it's we are blind test products, but I want innovative stuff, man. Everybody makes sticker and Gatsby's and whatever. So I don't want to discourage anybody from sending their products for us to blind test here, but make it innovative and I want homegrown stuff. Don't come to me if you were business already and you're well established. I want to meet the new entrepreneurs. So this week we're looking at a product a line called pomegranate wellness and i'm gonna just taste the collagen product i've heard lots about collagen never had it before so you stir this in into a cup of milk and it's meant to be good for your hair i've read and for your skin and all other ailments but mostly gut health which is something that i coincidentally suffer with so i watch what i eat and i try and uh, keep things sustainable, so your almond milk, the collagen mixed in, and a touch of honey just to let me see. It smells very cinnamony already, like a cup of booba, so I'm already liking the smell. And that's very nice. I mean, I was expecting something a bit drab, but this it tastes like a Thai, uh, what do you call it, a chai tea. I was going to say a, a Thai tea. Tea, that's something else. <laughs> but it does taste like a like a, a chai tea. That's actually not bad at all. Something that I would definitely use. And then part of the product range is called we've got these turmeric gummies. So they're like a sweet, like a, a, a jelly uh, baby sweet. And this is the pomegranate one. Now the story behind this is that about 17 years ago. A woman by the name of Lemise Romani, who's the owner of this brand, had a baby girl who was the her first child, and that child suffered from terrible colic. They went everywhere, dietitians. And then she started reading up about the benefits of turmeric and pomegranate. And since then, she's been selling her products to many, many people who suffer from the same issues with their children, but also for themselves. I'm going to taste this. Turmeric gummy now. I know about the healing powers. And this is tasty. Hmm. Lekker oepelijfen aan, ne? Pomegranate. Hmm. Very good. And um, if it's something that's so easy to eat and doesn't make you want to hurl, it's obviously. Not a bad thing either because most of these health and wellness products are a little bit difficult to get done. Apologies for eating and talking, but let me show you what these things look like. So we've got the full product range here. And um, the expiry date. 
It will obviously give the details, but it's pomegranate walnuts. This is the immune booster. It's got lemon, ginger, collagen, gelatin, and raw honey. It's a halal product, so you don't have to worry about that gelatin in there. I know sometimes some fatwas get sent out, but we just eat those Ola ice creams, eh? don't we? And there's 10 gummies in each pack. This is the pomegranate one with lemon, collagen, gelatin, and raw honey as well. It says here you must keep it frozen and defrost as required and consume immediately. Then, uh, the, this is actually the turmeric one. So I was having the, was it the immune booster? This is the turmeric one. Also all comes in packs of 10. There's oranges in here, turmeric, black pepper, collagen, gelatin, and raw honey. All good. All the things that's good for you. And then this is the collagen product. And it's something that um, I've read about collagen. I've always been interested, but you're never quite sure, you know, until you try it. And so this is very tasty. It's something that I would really uh, do more research in and investigate for myself. So, yeah, with that, I mean, send in your contributions for us to have a blind test of your product and review and support local business and just be liquor because that's what it's all about. People are going through the most during lockdown and they need our support. Also, on, a, on, on that note, I see these Mr. Delivery and Uber Eats guys, um, you know, riding their bikes in the rain and the wind and the hail. Give them a tip. You know, if you're sitting in a restaurant, I've seen this in our communities. Sometimes the waitrons are so shocked to see somebody giving, giving them a tip because other people don't tip. You know, it's very, very difficult to putting their lives at risk so that you can enjoy a meal. Just do the right thing and be like a...